Welcome to my channel. My name is Lindsay Sines. I am a nutrition coach and trainer for women. I own LS Fitness and Beauty and I am here to talk about week two of my diet and the progressions that I've made over my diet, how I've changed my macros around, what issues that I've ran into. So if you're interested in learning a little bit about me and my diet, please keep watching week or these last couple weeks, I've really kind of struggled and we're going to go through that when we look at my data, but I really had days where I didn't necessarily have a lot of discipline. I didn't hit my protein. I just wasn't feeling great about dieting. And I'm going to kind of show you what I did to kind of help myself out and not just say, try harder, work harder, push through it, but really shift it around my plan to really help myself get through that time. Um, that's something I really do with my one-on-one -on -one clients. If I see you struggling, we're just over and over not being able to stick to our plan. We really work together and shift and help you stick to your plan, help you um, just refocus and kind of move your plan and shift your plan around. It's going to really work for you. So I'm going to really talk about that as we go through my data, because that's something I struggled with a little bit. My weight kind of got stuck. I fluctuated back up a little bit, and I'm going to show you why in the, the clinical data, because that's something I talk about a lot is the clinical data. That's why we keep track of our data so we can really see, okay, my weight fluctuated up this day, why? What was the reasoning? And that's something I'm passionate about because I feel like that really takes the emotions out of it. Although I was a little emotional um, a couple of days. I had some days that I ate well over my calories. I had some days where I let self-sabotage creep in a little bit. Although I did get right back on track the next day. So let's jump into the data right now and I'll show you what I did, what I went through in the last couple weeks and what I plan on doing moving forward. So let's talk about my data for this week. So I'm going to move myself out of the way here. Um, so we went through weeks four in my last video. So if you have not watched that, then you'll definitely want to go back and watch the previous video. So you can see what I went through in the first four weeks of my diet. But let's talk about where we were at the ending of that four weeks. So we were at 146.1 was my average for the fourth week. Um, I was at 1900 calories, 117 protein, which is pretty low, which I talked about in my last week. 189 carbs and 82 fats and 14 fiber. 71, 66 steps. So let's kind of move down a little bit and we will kind of talk about week five. So going into week five, I was 146.1. So at the ending of week five, I did go down a pound. So I lost another pound in week five. So over the first four weeks, you can kind of see how I lost there in the first video, like I said, and I will link that video in the comments here, but I did lose a pound. I was at roughly about the same calories as the week before. No macro changes have been made. Um, so roughly the same amount of calories. Okay, so I had 97 protein, which is pretty low again, not doing well with my protein. So that's something I really need to focus on moving forward. Um, 186 carbs and 88 fat. So comparing that to the week before, we're roughly a, really close to what we were the week before. Like I said, calories were about the same and I still dropped a pound. My steps did increase some about what? 1,200, 1200 steps there. So we did have a little bit more steps, same calories, weight went down. So just to give some preface, I am doing a calorie cycling or carb cycling. So in the um, weeks four and then on. So Monday through Thursday, I'm doing lower calories. And then Friday and Saturday are higher cal calories just to allow for the weekend and um, if we have ball games or if we're in a tournament or something like that. 
So as of right now, you can see where the higher days are. Some days those fluctuate. If I know we're doing something different, I'll switch those macros around for those days. So that way I can feel more successful. So let's look at workouts. So let's go back up here. So in this week, I was doing my Fall Strong 30 Challenge. That was a workout every single day. Um, we had one rest day. So six workouts a week, one rest day. They were 30-minute workouts. So this week for week six, I dropped another pound, same calories, roughly the same macros. I had a lot more steps. So I did increase my steps by almost 3,000 steps. I was taking a deload week. So I did not work out during this week at all. I didn't work out at all. I just really focused on steps. And as you can see, I did drop another pound. So let's kind of look at my weight because you can see I fluctuated up this day and I had a lot more carbs. So we know, or if you don't know, carbs, when you intake carbs, they hold water in your muscle cell. So that is going to increase the scale by a little bit. So I had 150 carbs this day, 271 carbs this day. So my weight increased just from that water weight, not fat by any means, but if I were to be emotional and not have the clinical data to look at, I probably would have gotten really frustrated that day and say, oh my gosh, I gained two pounds of fat, this isn't working, I need to drop my calories. And that necessarily is not the case as I will show you with the next week. So we had a little bit of weight fluctuation here. We know that's from having high carb days. That's totally fine. We're moving on. We still dropped a pound on average for week six. So going into week seven, as you can see, I hit a really low low here. I hit a 142. Um, I did start a strength training program, my Body Strong 365. It is actually four days, but I made it a three-day program for myself. We have a lot going on right now, and I know three days is something that I can really stick to. I also added one day of 10 minutes of an assault bike every week, one day, not every day, one day of 10 minutes. Um, with this program, as you can see, I got very, very sore. When our muscles get sore, they tend to swell and can cause the scale to go up. So as you can see, I had a low day, I had a low day, and I had some decently higher days. And I believe that those are from being sore. And then I had some alcohol. So that's where I had the big fluctuation in weight. So I did not go down any here for average for the week. Now, if I wouldn't have had this day, I probably would have been a little bit lower. Let's delete it and see. So I would have gone down roughly like not even a half a pound, right? So let's add that back in because we want to be honest with ourselves. So we didn't go down a pound. We had the same amount of calories. We had roughly the same amount of macros. I did have a little bit more protein here, so yay for me. I did have alcohol this week. Alcohol can um, make you dehydrated. So if I didn't drink enough water, I'm going to see fluctuation in the scale from the alcohol, even if I tracked it and I hit my calories, which as you can see here, I was pretty high in calories. But my average calories for the week still averaged out to be right on track. So that's why one day of being off track isn't going to change your weekly average by a ton if it's not your normal. If it's just one day, one meal that throws you off, it's not taking you off course. It's just, you know, you just had one day of living life and that's okay. So as you can see here, I had... 330 carbs. That's a lot. And so my weight fluctuated up, up quite a bit from all those carbs. And that's totally fine. Let's look at the next day because this is Sunday. So when we look at Monday, I was right back down to where I was previous to being sore and previous to having that alcohol. So let's go into week eight. 
week eight, I stayed the same. I didn't lose any weight. I didn't lose any fat here. I had a little bit more calories, about 100 calories more. Let's see. This is the week before Christmas, I believe. Yes, this is the week before Christmas. Um, I had a really high day. So let's look at this day. So we are trending down, back down here. Had 1,700 calories for three days in a row. Had 1,800 calories here. Didn't do well with my protein. Looks like I probably didn't plan very well this day since my macros are really kind of wonky. Um, didn't plan very well that day. Let's keep going. Here is the day we had a lot of fat. We had a dinner out. I had a nice healthy meal, salmon with potato. I had some wine. Ate a little bit more earlier in the day because we didn't plan on going to dinner. But I know that one day is not going to throw me off track or one meal. So I'm not going to tell my husband, no, I can't have that. I don't want to go out to dinner. I had the dinner. I tracked it all. It was perfectly fine. It was a high day for me, but it was fine. We move on. So the next day, we had a holiday party. As you can see, protein is low Saturday and Sunday. Carbs were high on Saturday because we had the holiday party. You know, there's lots of munchies around. So we track them. We did our best to track all of the food. As you can see this day, I also got in a lot of steps. So I'm able to kind of balance things out for the day. No guilt, no shame, tracked it. My weekly averages were roughly on track. Sunday was a little bit lower. We had more food on Saturday. Didn't want a lot of food on Sunday. Just happened that way. I got my lift in Sunday. Felt good about my week. Didn't lose a pound. But also, maintenance is still progress through the holidays, right? Not gaining weight through the holidays is progress so i took the emotions out i didn't see the scale go down moving on this is week eight at 1900 to 2000 calories and remember when we started as you can see in my first video i was at really high calories i started at um, 2300 to 2400 calories i believe and my deficit is 1900 calories so I'm not getting really low. I haven't changed my macros in eight weeks. Only thing I've done is do a calorie cycling so I could have a little bit more calories on Friday and Saturday. That is it. The, the average calories for the week still equals out to be the same. So we're roughly still around 1,900 to 2,000 calories. We've been there. We're going into week nine. Week nine, we stayed the same again no weight loss. That's okay. No weight loss. We had some higher days. This was Christmas. I didn't track Christmas. I ate to my hunger cues. I have something with my clients we call the one plate plan. I stuck to my one plate plan. Felt great about it. Moved around. Got quite a bit of steps this week, even though it was the holiday. Had maybe one day that was lower than the average. Looks like I didn't I lifted this day, didn't sleep very well. Um, I was sore. Christmas Eve, we got our lift in. Christmas, we got our lift in, didn't track that day. So we averaged about right on track, a little bit higher in carbs and fats from the previous weeks, which is totally fine. Like I said, maintenance during the holidays is fine. So no change in weight going into week 10, which is this week. So we don't have our week filled out, right? Because it's today is Wednesday or today is Thursday. Yes, today is Thursday. <laughs> I was like, wait, what is today? Um, so today is Thursday. We don't have the rest of our week filled out, but this is my plan. So as you can see, my weight is trending down. I am on my period. I started on Tuesday. So Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday on my period. What happens when we're on our period? A lot of the times our weight will fluctuate up. So we fluctuated up. We're right on target with our macros. This here, this week, I actually changed my macro formation. I did not change my macro 
or my calorie number. My calorie number is still the same. Eight, or 1,900 to 200, 2,000 calories. I was struggling with the low days because my low days were about 1,550. And then my higher days were in the 2,000s. And that averaged out to be the 1,900 to 2,000 for the week. I was really struggling with those low days. Mentally, in the past, I've had a negative food relationship with food. And I don't want to get back there. So I started to notice that. So I shifted my macros to just have the same macros every day of the week. So every day of the week, I'll eat 1,890 calories, 140 protein, 175 carbs, and 70 fats. So that was better for me at the time. And this is where I'm talking about that I shifted what was going on in my mind to what I'm actually taking action on. Changing my macros to really help myself get in a better mindset and not to feel deprived in any way is my goal. So if I can't have that, then I want to stop dieting for a little while and go into a diet break. But since we've done that, everything's been going well. I had a low day of protein yesterday, actually a low day of calories in general yesterday. Um, I did not eat breakfast. We had a lot going on and I just didn't eat breakfast. So that was my fault for not getting that in. So today is going much better. Ate breakfast. Mentally, I'm feeling really good this week. My weight did trend back down this morning. So we'll see what my weight does for the rest of the week. And if I stay the same again, I will be reducing my calories 200 calories. Um, so that will put me at 1,690 calories. So I will reduce and then I will diet for a couple more weeks and just see how that goes. So that would have put me, let's see, one, two, three, four, five weeks if my weight does not go down past 144 here. If it does, I'll just stay with the same calories, but five weeks at the same weight. Five weeks. Five weeks before I change my macros because we want to make sure we're in a true plateau before we move forward. And on top of that, we want to make sure that we're getting our water in. We're getting enough sleep and we're getting enough steps and we're hitting our workouts before we reduce calories again, right? Because if we're not getting our steps in, we're not getting our water in and we're not sleeping enough, that could plateau us. And if we just got those things in, we wouldn't even have to reduce our calories. So we have to make sure that all the data is intact. We're doing all the healthy habits that we need to do before we move our calories down. So that's a plan. We'll see what happens after this week. I'll keep you updated. I'll do another video. I have a whole nother tracker here for the second part. I actually plan on starting a reverse diet on January 1st. That will not be happening as of yet because we didn't drop weight as planned. But that's okay because that's life and that is how fat loss works. Our body loses fat how, how it wants to. And then also next time I do my next video, part three, we are going to talk about my progress pictures and how my body has changed from before I started the diet to at that time currently. So you can look for that in the next couple weeks. And I hope this was helpful for you to really get an idea of how to manage your weight and how to track the data. Okay, so I wanted to jump back in and finish this video with what happened with the last week so I don't lag on into the next part of the series. So let's talk about what happened. I said that if my weight didn't go below 144 that I was going to drop my calories because I've been at the same calories for five weeks not changing, having the same average weight for five weeks. I know I was going through the holidays and really just maintaining through the holiday and didn't want to get in a bad food relationship at that time by dropping my calories and not being able to stick to it. 
So what happened? What happened was is I stayed 144.5, which I figured I was going to do. I've been dieting for 10 weeks now. So I'm having a little bit of metabolic adaptation. That happens when we diet. So what happens when we plateau, I've been at the same weight for five weeks. That is a true plateau. I've been getting my steps in. I was actually a little bit lower on my steps this week, so I potentially could have got more steps and my weight would have dropped a little bit, um, but most likely not. So what happened was is I lowered my calories. So this week I averaged 1,900, week before 2,000, um, before that 2,000. So pretty much 2, 1,900 to 2,000 is roughly my maintenance level calories right now. And that's going to happen when you're dieting. We're going to get used to the calories that we're eating over time. So we have to eventually lower them or we have to take a diet break. I'm not very low in my calories, so I have plenty of room to keep going down. So it's totally fine for me in my specific case to go down in calories. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. And mind you that I have been at the same average weight for five weeks. I didn't say, oh my gosh, one week I didn't lose weight and I'm lowering calories. I say I waited five weeks to lower calories. So I did lower calories by what, like a couple hundred calories, 150-ish calories. For this next phase, this is week 11, right now currently week 11, and what is happening? My weight is dropping. My average weight is 143.5. If I'm consistent through the weekend, that should stay the same, which pushed me down a pound in this week 11. So, looks like my body's reacting to the calorie reduction and we're still moving in a process of our weight moving down now in this time. So as you can see here, I've been pretty consistent with my new calories and macros. I'm hitting 135 protein, 150 carbs, and 70 fats, and roughly trying to shoot for 35 fiber. I've been struggling a little bit on the fiber, so I need to work on that. But my protein it has been getting better. Um, the last couple of weeks, I was not being very consistent with my protein. So I made it a point to try to be more consistent with my protein this week, and it looks like I'm being a little bit more consistent with that. So I wanted to give you that little update before I ended this series, um, before I get into the next video on what's happening weeks 12 and beyond. So thank you so much for watching. And I wanted to give you that update that metabolic adaptation does happen. We lowered calories. I started decently high. So as you can tell here, I have room to move down. If you don't have room and you're eating 1,200 calories, and this isn't going to be something that you can do. So then you would have to do a reverse diet. And we'll talk about that later. I'll make a video on reverse dieting later. But I wanted to give you a little bit of insight on what's happening with me in week 11. I feel like tracking data and having that data is so important. So I'm so thankful that you're here. I hope this was helpful. If it was, please subscribe to my channel, like this video, and give me a comment on what videos that you would like for me to do videos on. And I am so, so excited to have you here. Thank you for watching.